I'm Mark Cowan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. In the last video in our nutrient video series, I talked about why low nutrients are no longer where aquarists want to be for their quote unquote ideal tank parameters. And to fully understand why, I gave a call over to Dr. Tim. And in true Dr. Tim fashion, he went above and beyond on why low nutrients aren't ideal for your aquarium. Because people realize you have to have phosphates, if you have algae, you have nuisance algae, the thinking was, well, if we get rid of the phosphates, we'll get rid of the algae, or we can't grow the algae. But nature's smarter than that. By shifting your phosphate to the super low level, you eliminate what I say is the good guys and any chance of them, and you're gonna promote the bad guys because nature is gonna outsmart you when it comes to phosphates because the fact is, your phosphate test kit can only measure about 2% of the total phosphate in the aquarium. So why is that, Doc? Because there's two types of phosphate, inorganic or soluble reactive phosphate, SRP, and organic phosphate, which is phosphate that's bound to stuff. So the organic is 98% of the total phosphate in the system that's bound to something, bound to organic molecules generally. And your fish aquarium, of course, is full of organics. Fish waste, uh, out, dead algae, all that material is full of this organic phosphate that other organisms can get to. Other organisms like cyanobacteria and dinoflagellates can remove the organic phosphate from what it's bound to, but you can't measure it. So even though my test kit says zero phosphates, my aquarium can look like garbage because there's still phosphates in the system. Exactly. You, you can't test for that soluble reactive phosphate because who uses the soluble reactive phosphate? Bacteria that are in the water. Cyanobacteria are bacteria, but they're forming a film. You know, they're on the, on the surface but their competitor is like the waste away or equal balance, these free swimming bacteria that are in the water. That's why you have the dinos because the competition to the dino and the cyano on surfaces is the bacteria. These free swimming bacteria can only use the SRP and you don't have any SRP. So you've eliminated the competition and they're going, thank you very much. We're gonna make your life miserable. You know, you, you can physically remove as much of the cyano and the dino, but you got to shift the water parameters. You know, it's the environment, and you've shifted it to favor cyanos and dinos. And when you shift it over to favor, you know, by adding SRP, you're going to start growing bacteria in the water. Well, what do those bacteria do? They break down organics. That's why we're not covered in organics, the whole circle of nutrients type thing. As they break down those organics, the tank's going to look like crap. There's just no doubt about it. You're going to go through this terrible looking phase, but when you come out the other end, your tank is going to look so much better and you're not going to have the cyanos and dinos and, and life will be good. But you're going to, yeah, it's like remodeling a house. It's going to look like a mess for a while. How long it takes for your tank to go through the rebalancing and likely an ugly phase depends on lots of factors. It's hard to predict exactly. It may take days, it may take weeks, and your tank may not go through this ugly phase at all. Just remember, every tank is different. The best thing you can do is wait it out. Now we understand about the two different types of phosphates and why we want SRPs in our system to feed bacteria. Here's the bonus part. As you build up bacteria and SRPs in your system, you'll notice the coloring up of your coral which no one complains about ever. We've got phosphates down. What about nitrogen and nitrates? Well, nitrogen mainly comes into your system through fish food. Your fish and your corals and lots of other stuff in your tank needed to survive. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Nitrates are mainly formed from the byproduct of the nitrogen cycle. Fish waste turns into ammonia, turns into nitrite, and then nitrates. That's going on all the time in your tank. And again, that's not a bad thing. So you really can't avoid nitrates and we really don't want to. There's a lot of leeway when it comes to nitrates. Look, ideally I want them under 10, but if you get them up to 25, your corals likely aren't gonna care and your fish certainly aren't gonna give a flip either. 
But if you can't get your nitrates below 25 parts per million, likely something is wrong. Either you've got too many fish, you're feeding too much, or your filtration isn't very great. But overall, nitrates got a wide range to operate in. Phosphates, not so much. Now we understand nitrates and phosphates and why Dr. Tim and I prefer a system with lots of bacteria running around the tank. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at refugiums and why they're not that great of a nutrient export method. So until next time, I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank. Come and tell me half of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.